Let's now take a look at some of the key impossibility results in the judgment aggregation literature. These are results that you can think of as analogs of Arrow's impossibility theorem, showing that in, for judgment aggregation, for the problem of judgment aggregation, it is impossible to find an aggregation method that satisfies a certain set of very natural principles. So first of all, it's important to note that whether or not judgment aggregation gives rise to serious impossibility results is actually going to depend about how the propositions in the agenda are interconnected, how the agenda, the connections you can find in the agenda. Just intuitively, first of all, if the agenda doesn't contain negation pairs, then it's impossible to find an impossibility result. But that would, be, that would be a trivial case where you're essentially not allowing the voters to reject any propositions or judge any propositions to be false. Here's, so I need to give you a few definitions of what it means to say that our agenda is rich. Here's one key notion. We say that a set Y is minimally inconsistent. If it's inconsistent, so being inconsistent means it's impossible to make all of the formulas in Y true at the same time. So it's inconsistent, but every proper subset is consistent. So take any proper subset and that will be consistent. So a simple example of a minimally inconsistent set is just P and not P. There are the three proper subsets are the empty set, the set containing P, and the set containing not P. Each of these subsets are consistent, but the set itself is inconsistent. So that's what it means to be minimally inconsistent. You're just on the verge of being inconsistent. If you just throw out one element, you become consistent. Here's our first definition of what it means to say that an agenda is minimally connected. So an agenda is minimally connected if it's non-simple, that just means it has a minimal inconsistent subset with at least three elements in it. Second, it is even number negatable. What does that mean? Well, it means that it has a minimally inconsistent subset such that if you take y, you can find a subset of y with an even number of elements in it. You take out those elements, take out those propositions or formulas, and put in the negation of all of those elements or formulas. That resulting set is going to be consistent. So for example, to illustrate what's going on with this technical condition, think of the set p, p implies q, and not q. This set is inconsistent. It's impossible for P to be true, P implies Q to be true, and Q to be false. It's impossible to make all of these formulas true at the same time. I can find a subset of even size. So if this is my set Y, which is inconsistent, let's let Z be P and not Q. And then the set not Z for each Z and Z, is going to be, I negate all of the formulas in P. It's going to be not P and not not Q, which is just equivalent to Q. So the set Y minus Z union not Z for each Z and Z in this case is just equal to not P, P implies Q, and Q. And now this set is actually consistent because you can make p false p implies q true and q true at the same time so this is just an example of what this condition means but even number negatable just means that it has this minimally inconsistent subset such that you can take a set of even size and flip all of the elements in that set so to put a negation in front of all of the elements inside of that set, add that back in and the set becomes consistent. So here's two impossibility theorems. The first is from Dietrich and List, and it says if and only if an agenda is non-simple and even number negatable, so according to the previous definition, it's minimally connected, then every aggregation rule satisfying universal domain 
collective rationality, systematicity, and unanimity must be a dictatorship. So if you recall, systematicity is this principle that essentially combines an independence assumption with a neutrality assumption. It turns out that if we drop the even number negatable assumption, so if we have an agenda which is non-simple, then every aggregation rule satisfying universal domain, collective rationality, systematicity, unanimity, and monotonicity must be a dictatorship. So we can drop the even number negatable assumption, which is a bit of a technical assumption, and replace it with a monotonicity assumption, and we also have an impossibility result. Here's another definition of what it means for an agenda to be connected. Say that some proposition P conditionally entails another proposition Q, provided there is a subset Y such that Y is consistent with each of P and not Q. So that means Y is consistent with P and it's also consistent with not Q, such that if you take Y and add in P, then Q logically follows from that. What this means is that any way of making P true and all of the formulas in which in Y true, so any way of making P together with all of the formulas in Y true must make Q true as well. So Q is a logical consequence of Y together with the proposition P. We say that a, an agenda is totally blocked if for any two propositions P and Q, there essentially is a path leading from P to Q. So there's a sequence of propositions in the agenda such that P conditionally entails P2, which conditionally entails P3, which all the way down conditionally entails Q. So there's a way you think of conditionally entailing as a way of moving from one proposition to another. Being totally blocked means that for any two propositions in your agenda, you can move from one proposition to the other proposition. Here's our impossibility results using this notion. If an agenda is totally blocked and even number negatable, then every aggregation rule satisfying universal domain, collective rationality, independence, and unanimity is a dictatorship. So the relation between the theorems that we just went through is that we dropped the stronger systematicity assumption. So remember, systematicity built in both neutrality and independence. So we drop systematicity, which is a much stronger assumption than independence. But if we do that, we need a stronger notion of agenda richness. We need this notion of being totally blocked. And again, we can drop even number negatability and replace it with monotonicity. So we have the result, if an agenda is totally blocked, then every aggregation rule satisfying universal domain, collective rationality, independence, unanimity, and monotonicity must be a dictatorship. So as you can see, there are a number of very interesting and slightly technical theorems. There are many other variants. I recommend this survey article by Christian List Christian List also maintains an online bibliography of much of the research in this area. There's also a new textbook coming out, a new book by Davide Grossi and Gabriella Pigozzi on judgment aggregation.